Hello biologists, lovely to see you all. Here we are again for some online learning. Uh, just a brief recap, my slides will always look like this. We've got the keynote in red. This is something you might want to base your own notes off. Any additional information not directly linked to the AQA GCSE specification will be in black and anything that is in italics will be A-level or beyond, so some extended learning for you. Down the left-hand slide, <laughs> left side, we've got our key questions. These will link directly to the text. They're a chance for you to test your brain as you go through. You may want to put them in the margin of your own notes. It's up to you. Uh, format of our lesson, we'll start with the content, looking after your brain health. Uh, there'll be a start, starter and title. We'll move on to the content and some cumulative quizzing. Then we'll have some exam question practice and then a plenary and some oh, uh, some opportunities for extended learning. Uh, then we're going to look after your physical health. It's going to be tough sitting in front of a computer all day. Today we're going to do some body weight exercises. Uh, no cardio. No. Uh, and then a last five minutes, a nice activity for you to look after your mental health. So today we are going to start looking at anaerobic respiration in animal cells. I don't know why the title looks like that. I can't make it not look like that. I've given up trying to fix it. So we're going to start with the practical today using the hand that usually I say the hand that you don't write with, uh, maybe the, the hand you don't click on the mouse with. Uh, your non-dominant hand, anyway, raise it above your head. We are going to have a competition. A little high. There we go. Um, who can beat me? There we go. Usually it's last person standing in the lab, but I realise I'm standing here alone in the living room. Uh, so it's just you versus me. Don't you dare cheat. Um, the competition is holding your hand above your head. How many times can you open and close your hand? We need to have a steady rhythm. Let me show you that closely. Open and close repeatedly. Don't start yet. You'll get tired when I say go. No cheating either. No kind of light hand starting to come down. No propping it up with the other hand. We need it straight above your head. We need fully open and fully closed. Uh, fully closed. <laughs> You guys ready? Okay, in three, two, one, go. It starts off so easily. Feeling confident. Do you know, the first time I did this, um, after embarking on my gym journey, I, um, I was so confident. I, I was absolutely convinced I was gonna win. And I did it with, I think it was one of my current year 11 classes. And I was absolutely appalling oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh it's fine it's fine it's fine um you may have noticed something uh an observation of some kind i'm not going to give you any hints ah, open and close open and close come on quinn you can do this <laughs> Please. i don't think it's even been a minute yet oh my gosh come on hand keep going keep going this is a test of stamina, of willpower. I will not let your tens beat me. <laughs> My hand is just not working properly. <laughs> I think these count as fully open. Oh my gosh, I'm just like stabbing myself with my misshapen claw. <laughs> Come on, okay. Okay, I'm calling it time. Oh my gosh, ah. Oh. You keep going if you can. Um, but my question is, ooh, uh, describe how your muscles feel after a prolonged exercise. Um, and apparently I've put the, the answers in there straight away. Uh, they may feel tired. They may feel sore. They may feel like they're not working properly. Oh, uh, like they hate me for uh, making you do that. Um, these are important observations when it comes to anaerobic respiration. We are going to describe huh, what happens uh, during anaerobic respiration in muscle cells, in animals. Uh, we are not going to describe what happens in anaerobic respiration in yeast. I've moved that to tomorrow's lesson. There we go. These are our learning objectives. I've just not copied them over properly. Um, what happens with the buildup of lactic acid in muscle cells? That's what we're looking at. And we're going to compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay, so um, 
you're probably feeling a little bit of pain, uh, maybe some muscle fatigue, um, and this is because uh, we've just been rather mean to our poor little arm muscles. Um, we said last lesson that muscles need energy to contract, and this energy is provided by respiration. Uh, we said very explicitly that respiration occurs in the cell and it is in the mitochondria. Uh, the mitochondria are responsible for breaking down those glucose molecules and releasing energy from them. We said that aerobic respiration, when there is sufficient oxygen, enough oxygen, we have glucose plus oxygen, it makes lovely carbon dioxide and lovely water. And both of these are removed from the body by the bloodstream. They are exhaled by our lungs and we have no problem whatsoever. Carbon dioxide and water, lovely waste products of aerobic respiration. Um, we have a slight problem though, when there is insufficient oxygen, we've got a different biological pathway, a different reaction is used. This is less efficient, it doesn't release anywhere near as much energy as aerobic respiration, but in times of kind of high energy demand when there's not enough oxygen, um, it is a perfectly good backup. So anaerobic respiration, We've still got glucose um, as the main fuel, the main source of energy, but we don't have any oxygen or we have insufficient oxygen. So we can't oxidize this glucose. We can't react it to make carbon dioxide and water. So your body has a very clever, clever alternate pathway. Instead of reacting it with oxygen, it can just split one glucose molecule in two. The word for splitting is lysis, so this is glycolysis. We can split glucose into two molecules and we end up with two C3H6O3 molecules. This isn't something you need to remember, it's just quite a nice way of tying it all together. These nasty little molecules are lactic acid and we have just experienced what lactic acid can do when it builds up inside uh, inside your muscle cells. So one glucose molecule is split in half to make two lactic acid molecules. Lactic acid will build up in your muscles. When there is insufficient oxygen, your muscle cells will respire anaerobically Lactic acid will build up and this is what causes the soreness in your muscles and stops them from working. My hand um, really, really struggled to contract towards the end there. I don't know uh, how far you guys took it, but if you go part, like if you keep pushing through that muscle soreness, you'll get to a point where it just stops working. Um, this point where we've got muscle soreness and we've got um, ineffective contraction. We call this muscle fatigue. Your muscles um, are not working as well as they should. So just as a little reminder from last lesson, I've put our lovely big glucose molecule here and our two lactic acids. If you would like as an extension, you can use the bond energies from last lesson to work out how much um, less energy um, is released overall, like counting up the energy in the bonds when they're broken, calculating the energy in the bonds when they're made. It's up to you. Um, but we are going to do a practical today. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. The biggest challenge is how can we do science practicals outside of the lab? So we're going to get a little bit inventive here. Um, this practical involves members of your household. Um, so it's up to you how many members of your household that you would like to use um, but the equipment all you need is something that weighs a kilogram uh, I have got a bag of sugar I would suggest though um, because we don't want to split any bags ending up with mess kind of wasted food Ooh. I would suggest sugar on the corner uh, putting whatever food item that you're going to use inside a plastic bag, just to make sure that you don't have any spillages or um, any mess. Maybe one a little bit bigger than that with a handle would be handier. Um, so we've got our one kilogram mass. You need a stopwatch. The one on your phone will be absolutely fine. 
Um, and this is a really, really easy method. What you need to do with a member of your household is get them to hold their arm and the one kilogram mass perpendicular, so at a right angle to the body. As soon as their arm is outstretched, you start your stopwatch and you hold it, or they hold it, and you time it until their arm drops. Now what they will feel is a slight burning up here at the top of their arm. They may feel burning down here from where they're um, contracting the um, muscles that cause their hand to grip. Um, to begin with, it's nice and easy, but it starts to become very, very uncomfortable. Um, not yet, not yet, it's okay, I can keep going. Um, depending on your, uh, on your subject, oh no, yeah, definitely burning there now. Ooh. And you can tell when to stop the timer, uh, when, sorry, you stop the timer when their arm drops. So now I'm really, really struggling. I can feel my muscles shaking ever so slightly. <laughs> um, there are a few factors that affect how long people can hold their arm outstretched. Um, one is of course muscle mass. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm making that up. Um, one is kind of like <laughs> competitive spirit, I would say, from my observations of year 10s doing this. The most determined year 10s are usually the ones that win. Now it really burns. <sighs> okay. They might decide to drop their arm early. Um, this, this may give you some slightly weird results, um, but it is whenever their arm starts to drop. I'm quite impressed at how well this arm is doing. I can tell it's getting really, really, really hard now. Do you think it's dropped? Is it still perfect? <laughs> hey, Oz, you're all right. <laughs> At least one of us is working hard. Okay, now I can I can feel that it's definitely not perpendicular. Okay, so my time would stop there. Ten seconds rest. They can shake it out if they like. Five, four, three, two. One, and there we go again. And this time, because the muscle is already fatigued, what we should see is a shorter amount of time because it hurts already. Already it hurts. And uh, this is where I'm going to stop and let you carry on with the experiment uh, yourself. Um, so, you can repeat a third time as well. Um, you could go four and five times if you like. It depends how how much the members of your household have been getting on your nerves. That's up to you. I'll let you design the experiment um, in any way <laughs> you see fit. Don't torture your household members. You don't know how long you've got to live with them for. Um, so this is our practical. Pause the video here, sketch this table. Um, our hypothesis is the more lactic acid there is in the muscles, the shorter the amount of time this mass can be held for. So if we've already got muscles that are fatigued, there's a buildup of lactic acid, the second time and the third time, and the fourth time and fifth time should be shorter and shorter and shorter. This is a hypothesis. Let's see if we can prove it right or prove it wrong. Pause and have a go. <laughs> oh, so hopefully your data proved our hypothesis. I, do, I don't know. It's um, it kind of it throws up interesting data every time I do it. Um, sometimes year tens become more determined <laughs> as they go on. Um, so weirdly, the amount of time that they can hold it for uh, gets longer, which is peculiar. But um, yeah, it is definitely a practical that can be improved. So it's an excellent opportunity to discuss the limitations. Um, you have got an incredibly limited sample size. Um, members of your household, you might only have two or three people that you can get to do this. It isn't really an experiment we can do repeats on either because um, once that muscle is fatigued, um, it's, it's not going to be 
you know, we're, we're, we're changing more than one variable. You haven't got exactly the same conditions for that muscle again. You could try with the other arm, but then again, people have dominant hands, so it isn't really one that we can repeat again and again and again. Uh, you might tr be able to try it on different days, but then that muscle has got more practice with holding that out. So we've got a bit of a problem uh, when it comes to collecting more and more data so we can spot anomalies. Um, you might have an issue where some members of your family have eaten a massive breakfast, so their uh, glycogen stores and their muscles are nice and full. Maybe some people haven't. Um, we, we haven't got the same baseline for all members of our household. Uh, you've got different um, ages of people. Some people may be more in, uh, used to endurance exercises, and we've got different tolerances to that pain. Some people might give up very easily. Some people might carry on until they literally can't hold it a second longer. Um, so it's not a perfect practical, but it is a good opportunity to design a better practical. Um, this is an optional activity, but if you Google investigating muscle fatigue and click on images, there are loads and loads and loads of methods out there because this used to be a piece of GCSE science coursework, the Muscle Fatigue ISA. I -S -A. Um, so there are loads and loads of resources out, out there to get you going. This is just one method that you could use. Could you design a better method? If you can, I would love to see it. So if you do uh, decide to talk to members of your household using a different method, uh, please write me up a method so I can have a look and maybe we can share it with each other and see which produces the most valid results. Um, but back on with our information. Um, We've had this slide already. We were talking about glucose and lactic acid building up in the muscles, stopping them from contracting uh, efficiently, effected effectively. And this is what we call muscle fatigue. So at the moment, post-practical, you might be experiencing a bit of muscle fatigue. Um, On to our cumulative quizzing. Uh, we've got the two questions from last lesson. This is how cumulative quizzing works. We don't just focus on the knowledge we're absorbing now, we focus on the knowledge that we had previously. And this constant recall builds more and more neurological pathways, which means that that information is easier to access. You build up more links to that information. So, pause the video. Can you answer the two questions from yesterday and the two questions from today? Or the two questions from last lesson. I don't know if you watched it yesterday. Pause the video. And here are the answers. Our answers from yes, not yesterday. Our answers from last lesson and our answers from today. How well did you do? Give yourself a mark out of nine. So, on to comparing aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Um, we've said that they're both used to release energy. That energy is used for muscle contraction um, and it is released by mitochondria inside the cell. We've also said that anaerobic respiration releases much less energy than aerobic respiration, but there are other similarities and differences. Um, this could be presented as a kind of four or six mark question, compare aerobic and anaerobic respiration, but let's start with a table. We've talked about the amount of energy. I'd like you to also list the reactants, the products, and what kind of oxygen levels um, are required for each one of these types of reactions or required. It's not really great English. You know what I mean. Pause and have a go. So with anaerobic, oh sorry. So with aerobic respiration, uh, we release a lot of energy. Uh, reactants are glucose and oxygen and the products are carbon dioxide and water. This occurs when there is sufficient enough oxygen. To compare, anaerobic respiration doesn't release anywhere near as much energy. If you want to look at it in terms of ATP that's um, released for A level, feel free to go and look at the amount of ATP um, associated with these two biological pathways. Uh, reactants, we've got glucose and the product is lactic acid, two molecules of lactic acid. Um, this occurs when there is not enough oxygen, when there is insufficient oxygen. Oxygen, um, sorry, glucose is not fully oxidised. With aerobic respiration, glucose is fully oxidised. With anaerobic respiration, not fully oxidised. So, 
We talked about sufficient and insufficient oxygen, but let's give a context of when this can occur. So when you begin an activity, for example, a sprint, uh, something I try and avoid whenever I can, but let's say it's a sprint. Um, to begin with, your muscles have got a supply of oxygen um, and a supply of glucose just in the blood around them. Your blood oxygen levels are usually relatively high. So to begin with, there is sufficient oxygen there. Um, but very quickly, this oxygen is going to be used up. Your muscles are still demanding energy. So respiration is still going to occur. But because there is not enough oxygen there, there is insufficient oxygen, it has to be anaerobic respiration. So there is a period of time between starting the exercise and um, when your body can respond to that change in activity where anaerobic respiration takes over. Your body will take a little while to respond to this change in activity and your muscles are going to have to contract regardless of whether there is sufficient oxygen or not. So anaerobic respiration is the main um, reaction used to release energy at this point. You can see on the graph the purple line shoots up really, really quickly. Um, luckily though, your body does respond. If we link back to our changes during exercise, uh, you take in more oxygen. Your breathing rate becomes faster, your breathing rate increases, and it becomes deeper as well. You no longer have this lovely kind of like shallow breath. You've got, well, <laughs> I do certainly when I'm running, um, really, really big, deep breaths. So more and more oxygen is getting into your lungs. To take it from your lungs to the muscles that need it, your heart rate also beats faster. We went from grey to red there. Um, so your heart rate increases to pump your blood carrying this oxygen to the muscles where, is, where it is needed. And this has an effect on our graph. The amount of aerobic respiration will start to increase as more and more oxygen reaches the muscles. The muscles? The muscles. Um, this means that anaerobic respiration, the less efficient um, reaction, starts to decrease. We've got more and more oxygen getting to these muscles. They can respire aerobically um, until we get to a point where aerobic respiration um, kind of plateaus and we've got this steady state of respiration. Anaerobic respiration comes right down. Um, but we've got a bit of a problem. We've still got this painful lactic acid that has built up in our muscles. Now, you know from living um, that your muscles don't hurt forever. It feels like when they start hurting, it feels like they're going to hurt forever. But luckily, our bodies have a way of getting rid of this lactic acid. And you might have noticed that by this point, your arm has stopped aching. Um, mine's not doing too badly, I have to say. Um, we've got lactic acid built up in our muscles, um, which is a result of anaerobic respiration. This is because there is not enough oxygen, so it hasn't been oxidised completely. Um, this lactic acid is eventually removed by your bloodstream, um, and it can be taken to the liver where it's converted back into glucose. Um, so you might notice after exercise, um, that your heart rate and your breathing rate stay elevated for a little while. Um, like when you stop running, you don't suddenly go back to being able to breathe normally and your heart rate is perfectly normal again. If you are a human who is used to exercise, you do a lot of exercise, you will recover faster. If you're a human that doesn't do as much exercise, it will take you longer for your heart rate to come down and for your breathing rate to come down. Um, but no matter what level of fitness, there is a period of time after an exercise where our bodies carry on um, taking in an excess amount of oxygen. Um, and this extra oxygen that we take in after exercise um, helps to remove the lactic acid from the muscle cells and we call it an oxygen debt historically it's always been called an oxygen debt and it's the amount of oxygen taken in after exercise to help remove the lactic acid that's built up as a result of anaerobic respiration 
Um, so, on to the past paper questions. So this is a specimen question. Uh, we're looking at how exercise affects heart rate. We've got student A and student B. You can see that they've measured heart rate every hmm, two minutes. Um, and they've, they've seen what happens uh, during exercise and what happens after exercise. So, question one, what was student B's resting heart rate? Look at the graph, can you figure it out? Student started running at two minutes, what evidence is there from figure four? How many minutes did they run for? And student B is fitter than student A. Two pieces of evidence to support that statement. Pause the video if you'd like a little bit more time. And the answer is 66 beats per minute. You can see this from the graph. So if we look at student B, they are the little dashed line. So as you go up the y-axis, uh, you can see that their resting heart rate, their low heart rate, lowest heart rate, where it's uh, a straight flat line, um, is at 66 beats per minute. Uh, they started running at two minutes. Well, that was when both of their heart rates started increasing. Um, how many minutes did they run for? Looking at the graph, so they started at two. It looks like they stopped at six, so four minutes. Yay! Uh, and <laughs> student B is fitter than student A. Two pieces of evidence. Well, uh, their heart rate doesn't get as high. Um, that's one piece of evidence. They recover faster. That is another piece of evidence. Student B recovers faster than student A. Uh, their resting heart rate is lower. Could that be a third one? Resting heart rate is lower. Heart rate didn't increase as much. Didn't increase as fast. Ah, good point. Yeah, very nice. Um, and return to normal sooner. So, ha there are other changes in the body during exercise. Explain why these changes occur. What a nice question. Okay, we've talked about a couple of these. Um, we talked around about heart rate increasing, breathing rate increasing, breathing depth increasing. Why does the heart rate need to increase? Why does breathing depth and rate need to increase? But there are other changes as well. Think about what happens when you exercise. Um, you might, uh, well, actually, no. One reason I hate cardio is because I get hot and sweaty. Uh, these are two changes. Why do those changes occur? Um, any other changes during exercise? Have a think. Pause the video if you want some more time. And the answers. So this is a leveled answer. This means that your answer needs to fit into one of these two leveled brackets. So if you are a level one answer, uh, you've made relevant points, separate relevant points, and you haven't really made that many links. So you might have said that your breathing rate increases, that sweating occurs, uh, that your muscles get tired, um, and you need more oxygen and all of these points are valid but you haven't really linked them together. If you're a level two answer then you've got at least two separate changes and you've explained why. So you've linked those changes to the reason behind those changes. So for example you might have said breathing rate increases to provide more oxygen or breathing rate increases to remove more carbon dioxide. Um, the same for deeper breathing, body temperature increases because the rate of respiration has increased. Um, you could say sweating occurs to cool down the body, yep, down the bottom. Uh, oh, and a nice explanation as well by evaporation of sweat if you wanted to go into how sweating cools down the body because it's not just getting wet, it's the evaporation of the sweat, uh, that change of state that helps to um, cool your body down. In changing from a liquid to a gas, um, energy is required. So there's a nice link to particle model in physics there. Uh, vasodilation, that's when um, all the capillaries um, dilate. They, 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 become, they get closer to the surface of your skin, you become flushed. And this also helps um, with remove it and removing <laughs> this also helps to cool you down uh, if the warm blood is closer to the surface of the skin um then um what are we what are we going to do we're going to heat sweat faster sweat can evaporate faster oh 
there's a, a leap uh, feel free to research that and uh, what what else could we do yeah have a look into that correct me <laughs> um, muscle fatigue um, why does that occur build up of lactic acid that's not one of our marking points then there but um, I think because this is a specimen paper to describe um, or to explain the reason behind muscle fatigue we'd want to link to lactic acid buildup. Um, okay, we've got a nice little equation. How can you tell from the equation that the process is anaerobic? Anaerobic, what is missing? Exercise cannot be sustained when anaerobic respiration takes place in muscle cells. Ooh, explain why. Mm, linking to energy. Pause the video and the answers. So no oxygen is used. This is how we can tell it's anaerobic, that if it was aerobic respiration, it would be glucose plus oxygen. Um, specimen paper, hmm, yeah. Uh, cannot be sustained. Oh, I missed that it was two marks. I only gave one reason. Uh, muscles become fatigued, they stop contracting. Uh, not enough energy is transferred, see? You still make, you can make silly mistakes all the time. Look at the number of marks. Two marks, two points. Okay, respiration can happen aerobically or anaerobically. Respiration transfers energy from glucose. Draw one line, one line. Even though there's four boxes there, one line from each type of respiration in human cells to the correct information. Now, if you've read ahead and you've looked at anaerobic respiration in yeast cells, there may be another answer jumping out at you, but the question is asking you about human cells. Pause the video if you want some more time. One line. And the answers. So we've got aerobic respiration um, uses oxygen and anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid. I hate it when they don't fill those boxes in. Uh, lactic acid is produced in muscles where there is insufficient oxygen. Suggest how they feel. So, how do muscles feel when lactic acid levels increase? <laughs> yep, aching, burning, hurting, fatigue, tired, cramping, or painful. That's how they feel. A bit of a strange question. This caught a lot of people out when it was in um, the mock because they said a lot of things like they stop working or um, there's not enough oxygen. They, they missed the, the fact the question was about how they feel. Um, so, ooh, we've got some data. Table two shows the amount of energy released by aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So here we can actually compare the amounts of energy released. You can see it's an awful lot more for aerobic respiration. Um, suggest why human cells might respire anaerobically even though only a small amount of energy is transferred. What conditions might be required? Not enough oxygen. Um, or, ah, more energy required for exercise than can be transferred by aerobic respiration. There's a nice example. So we talked about um, that kind of steady state plateau that way around for the graph, wasn't it? Um, for aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration, like if you are really pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, can step in to provide that little bit of extra energy. Mm, nice answer. So here we are at the end of the lesson. Turn this lesson into a mind map. If anyone out there has got any other ideas for plenaries, please let me know. Um, mind maps are my go-to uh, because I, I, I quite like the visual aspect and I can see all of the learning in one go. But if someone's got an idea for a different plenary, please do let me know. Your extended learning for today is to explore this exercise physiology website. Um, it is really nice. Uh, it looks really basic, but there is an awful lot of um, nice stuff there, which goes into quite a lot of detail. If you're studying human biology next year, um, there is loads and loads of lovely stuff here to prepare you for A-level. Um, here we go. So, my favourite part of the lesson, a little bit of activity. Um, you are going to need some comfortable clothing. You might want some water uh, because we're going to do my favourite thing, which is resistance training. Uh, we're going to do it with body weight, not with any weights. Um, because who knows what people have got in their houses. Um, I mean, we've all got a kilogram, but uh, that's not going to do us much good. So,
we are going to focus mainly on lower body today, um, which I may regret because after the mountain climbers last lesson, uh, my hips are killing me. But we are going to have a go. To begin, we're going to do some dynamic stretching to make sure that the big joints in our body are mobilised and then we've got muscle, uh, we've got blood going to our muscles. We want to elevate our heart rates a little bit um, before we start doing some lifting. So to begin with, we're just going to do some squats. So keep your knees above your toes. Shall I bring it down a bit? Knees above your toes and stand up straight. Three, four, five. Feel free to put some music on. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to do some lunge to twist. So stepping forward with your right leg, lunge down and twist over towards your right. Back to the front, push back. Left foot, twist to the left, to the front, push back. Speed it up a bit. Two, three, three. You're joking in. <laughs> Are you going up there? <laughs> Four. Four. Five. Who is it, Oscar? Five. Six. I need that sofa for a minute. Six. Seven. of step back and reaches. I think these have probably got a better name. Two. So foot going behind you, arms coming above your head. Three maybe. Three. Four. Four. These are my potassium leggings by the way. It's a nice hole in the right knee from where some potassium attacked me. Let me know if you're in the class when that happened. I think it was a year 10 class. Who's counting? Cross count. How many have you done, Oscar? Eight, maybe? Eight. Nine. Nine. Ten. Ten. Okay, so hopefully we've got some blood going to our legs. What we're going to do is some step ups. <laughs> These are going to target our quads. So, on a relatively low surface, um, maybe a chair, maybe a sofa, all we're going to do is come up and down. Up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, and the other foot, other, other leg, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, second exercise. We're going to do some Bulgarian <laughs> split squats. Um, if your dog's in the way, feel free to use another sofa. Um, by putting our leg or our foot on a bench, that's a little high. Um, there we go, let's get a table. So, putting your foot on a surface, ideally a little bit lower than this, hop your left foot forwards, and we're just going to lunge down and back up. I always like to hold my, hold, hold my own hand during this. Four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Other foot, other leg. Hop it forward, knee over the foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's burning. Eight, lactic acid. Nine, ten, ouch. Eleven, twelve. Oh my gosh. Now, third exercise. Gonna do it's just some static lunges just to finish them off. So start with the original leg. We're just gonna dip down one, two, three, four, five, six, ow, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Whoo, swap them over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ow, eight, nine, whew, ten, eleven, twelve. Whew. Hopefully you're noticing your heart rate raising, your breathing rate raising, whew, and your breathing depth raising. One minute rest, and we'll repeat two more times. Um, skip back to where we started, if you want to go through those instructions again. I'm going to pause it. <laughs> uh, so, for the final, most important bit of our lesson, a little bit of mindfulness. Um, my friend Georgia sent me a link to an 8D music track by Pentatonix. And it was amazing, and I wish I could find you the link that she sent me, um, but I can't. So I found um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, so hopefully that's just as awesome as the one that I listened to. Uh, make sure you've got both your headphones in, and it is a, a really, really cool song um, to listen to. So, oh, thank you for sitting through. Um, any feedback, please let me know. Um, if you want to send me any mind maps or send me any questions, feel free to email me. Um, but apart from that, be awesome and do awesome things. And I'll see you guys soon.